Hey there YouTube! Welcome back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, Solo Tabletop Gamer. And in this video, I'm going to do a special one here, and we're going to do a crash course on Mythic. And this is a video on a follow-up from a comment I got from Jonathan Baldridge. I hope I didn't slaughter your name. If I did, I apologize. And that is, do you know where I can find an in-depth video or guide on how to use Mythic Emulator, please? Well, Jonathan, let's get into that video. But before I do, if you like my video, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. Every time I upload a brand new video, you will hear about it. All right, so let's get into Mythic. What is... Mythic, and I have talked about this before a lot in my early videos. Mythic itself is a standalone RPG system, and it can also be used for any RPG system out there, and it's very easily adaptable, we'll say. The problem with Mythic were, and I had to read this book when I first got it, about two times before it actually sank in because you know it's like asking somebody what time it is and they want to tell you how to build a clock and that's what mythic is like so I'm gonna do a crash course here to help you guys really wrap your mind around mythic and be able to use this with some simplicity so the first thing the very, very first thing I'm going to get into about Mythic. Whatever RPG system you are using to play this with. Now, if you are using Mythic as a standalone system, you're going to want to read the character creation and go through that chapter. And it's going to walk you through character creation. I'm not going to get into it in this video because the scope of this video is to explain to you how to use the book for any RPG including Mythic itself using its character. So as I said if you look at the character creation it's going to give you two um, character I'm going to say ways to be able to generate a character that's going to be the best way I can explain it and they got a simple way and they got a point system way and you would have to read that chapter and it's about four pages long and it's going to explain you how to, to do that and it's actually fairly simple so let's move on so depending on what RPG system you are using first thing I want you to do is flip to page 99 when you get to page 99, you're going to see Converting to Mythic. Now, if you look, they have several boxes outlined that are called Scaling Boxes. Now, if you're using a D20 system to reuse 3D6 to, at that point, generate your attributes, you're going to use the 3D6. If you are using a dot or a point system, such as Worlds of Darkness, um, vampire, the masquerade, werewolf, so on and so forth, you're going to want to use the scaling box of the five dots. And of course, if you're using a system like I really like, like Ruin Quest, you're going to want to use the percentile skill based system at that point in the lower right hand corner. Now, looking at your attributes, you're going to at that point look at where your tribute score is and in the column next to it it's going to at that point tell you your rank and this is very important you're going to want to remember this in either reference back to this page or write it down on a character sheet and that's going to go from minuscule to weak to low below average average above average high exceptional incredible and awesome so once you have that figured out, and I know everybody plays just so many different RPGs, I'm going to leave that up to you to be able to go through and at that point, you know, you're going to be able to figure this one out on your own. 
Okay, so now that you have figured out whatever RPG you're using and you have now the conversion box, let's turn at this point to page 26. And we're all familiar with this. This is the fate chart. Now, when you look at the fate chart, it can be overwhelming at first, but after I get done with this video, you're going to understand this in way, way better probably than you ever have before, and it's going to make a lot more sense to you. So when you look at the fate chart, now you have gone to page 99, you have figured out whatever system you're using, and looking at your attribute modifier, or your attribute score, I, I should say, it's going to give you, at that point, your conversion over into minuscule, weak, average, so on and so forth. So, when you look at the fate chart, on the left-hand side, you see acting rank. This is actually referring to your attribute modifiers, or if you have a penalty to that attribute. So when you look at that, that's going to be your left-hand column, which is right there. This column right here. Pretty simple so far. So, now, moving on, because there's a lot more charts, as you can see in here. we got this column, which I'm going to explain to you, and the one on the bottom. I'll explain to you as well. So now, we have that down. We understand that we're on the same page, and now the fate chart's starting to make a little bit more sense to us at this point. Now, one thing in Mythic that I really do like, and I have said this in a lot of videos, is keeping a game journal. And the way that they use it is with scenes. And this bottom, at this point, bracket right here, is where your scenes are going to come in. And we're gonna ex I'm going to explain to you how that's going to work, how that affects your chaos factor, and how the difficulty rank at that point flows into that. So, with the, as they put it, scene setups, and this is such a good system to use, particularly if you're, if you're new to RPG, or if you're just new to solo RPG and you're learning, this works really, really, really well. And I'm trying to get to that page to show you where the template is for your scene setup. Okay. So if you turn to page 106, and it's going to be extended example. That's page 106 again. They're going to show you a template of what they call their scene setup. So, as they explain it in here, you, you have two characters, and at that point, they enter into this abandoned building. So, that would be your first scene. And when they approach, is the door locked? Hmm, well, okay, it is. So the door's locked. Now your character has some skill at that point, okay, with picking locks. So at this point, we're going to want to use our skill to be able to pick the lock. So now I look at my attribute modifier, and I'm going to use dexterity. Now, uh, he's above average. And with picking locks. So looking at my acting rank, that's going to be the column above average. Now, in the scene, because in the scene that we are in, this is an abandoned building. It's a pretty, how do I put this, average, um, this is a pretty average, we'll say, routine thing that this guy does. He, it's nothing out of the ordinary for him. So at that point, 
the difficulty of this is going to be average for him. It's, you know, he does this all the time. He's a thief. He's used to doing this. So when we look at our bottom bracket, at that point, we would fall right here in the center of average. So now comes the question where the fate chart comes in. So, did he successfully pick the lock? Well, we're going to roll at that point our percentile dice and we're going to see what that answer is. Well, we come up with a 26. So he's got an above average ability. What he's doing is average. And that falls into very unlikely. And where I get that is by looking over here at this column on the odds. Now, this is where your chaos factor comes in. Because as they explain, they like to add some mm, twists to your scenes. And they do that by generating very um, I'm trying to think of the word here that I want to use. Oh, wait a minute. Random. Random tables, like I always talk about. Random. Yeah, they put randomness in here. Imagine that. So, and I'm, how the random table works is when you roll on the fate chart, if you were to roll an 11, or a 22, or a 33, a 44, so on and so forth. Basically double numbers. If you roll double numbers at that point. And you're going to roll on your randomness chart. And I am getting to that page to tell you this. Da, da, da. So, if you turn to page 60, we're going to turn to page 60. So, we rolled, his odds weren't good, and we rolled a 22, we're going to say. So if you look at the upper right hand corner of page 60, it has an event focus table. Now, as you notice these numbers, these numbers generate one through seven, eight through 28, 29 through 35, so on and so forth. So 22, so looking at that table, I would fall between eight and 22. And that would be an NPC action. Now, you could, at that point, we rolled a double number, you could roll your percentile dice again, and this time, I come up with a 99. So that would be an NPC positive reaction, if I wanted to use that. And let's use that. Let's go with an NPC positive reaction. Because... You remember I said there were two people, so I got my character, and now there's this NPC involved as well. So now at that point, we're going to flip to page 64. On page 64, you're going to see, at this point, two separate tables. One is going to be your event meaning action. The other one's going to be the event meaning subject. So we're gonna roll our percentile dice again. So, that NPC, first one was a 22. And the action that he carries out is he's befriended. So, he's been like, hey, look here, man. I see what you're trying to do. Let me step in and be a pal and help you out. The meaning of the subject, 73, 
opulence. I'm going to roll that again. 52. Dispute. So, how I could interpret this was this NPC in my character had several disputes in the past and they're both trying to reach a common goal so at this point he decides to bury the hatchet and say hey let me help you out let me uh, step in there and see what I can do at getting this lock unlocked for you so now it is at this point and they explain this in here that you have to use some logic to these random tables and make them fit into your story so at this point I would say the NPC is going to step up at that point I'm gonna go back to the fate chart and at this point he's going to try to pick the lock now I'm going to guess he has above average skills himself for the fact that he's helping a fellow thief out which means he's probably a thief as well now the difficulty rank is going to remain the same it's going to be average let's see what happens when he goes to unlock that lock I roll an 11 Ooh, well guess what there's another randomness that happens as a result of this while he is trying to pick that lock and looking at the fate chart I'm gonna fall into impossible he finds it impossible to get past this lock there's something special about this lock at that point I'm gonna go back to that random table again on page 60 I'm going to roll my percentile dice again I have a 16. Looking at that, it falls back into an NPC action again. So now, the NPC that decided to be the good guy and step up, this is the guy that had a grudge against my character before and decided he was going to be the good guy and show him how to unlock this lock. So the first roll is a 64 which at this point he's starting to view this job as a burden to him and it's starting in at that point maybe he's feeling embarrassed and he can't get this lock open and he doesn't really like this guy he just took this job for whatever reason he's trying to make the best of it but now it's becoming a burden to him the action that will come out of that i rolled a 61 is oppress so now, at this point, he feels as if he's being belittled. He feels as if he's been oppressed by my character. Now, at this point, the chaos factor raises one point. Now there's some friction there. I'm going to go back to that fate chart again. So now, I have went from average... Now, to this point, above average, I'm going to ask myself, are these two going to have an argument? I'm going to roll percentile dice again. 30. Well, it jumps from 20 to 35. And... I land on a 50-50% chance of odds. It could happen, it couldn't. So I want to roll that again, 50-50. Let's see which way this is going to go. I come up with a 25. Well, still a 50-50 chance for the odds. I'm still within that range. So now this is where, as they explain in Mythic, the logic on my part is going to come in. So at this point, what I am going to do is I'm going to go back to that random table. I'm going to roll 
my percentile dice again on the event focus table to see what winds up happening. And I have a 40. So I fall between 36 to 45, move towards a thread. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. So moving towards a thread, how they foresee and they explain to you how the scenes work is one scene will lead to the next scene, which will lead to the next scene, and they are all connected by threads. The events that your characters do create a new thread to at that point go off into another direction of the story which keeps it interesting and which makes Mythic very unique. And why I have used this to adapt to so many of my solo RPGs, because it adds that act, that element, I should say, of randomness into your game. So, quick, at this point, recap on the fate chart so far. And we're going to move on from here and see what happens with the, my character in this NPC. So if you remember, this bracket right here acting ranks is your attribute modifier. The bottom bracket right here represents the difficulty rank, meaning at that point whatever the character is trying to do we're trying to get past this lock that seems to be a pretty simple lock but it's turned out it's not a simple lock as a result of that this NPC that doesn't really like my character is now starting to get really upset with him and it looks like a fight is going to at that point ensue and over here in this bracket are the odds what are the odds of the outcome so let's jump back into it at this point there is a new thread so I have to ask my question myself this question what would the thread be even though this is supposed to be an abandoned building there's this high security lock on it is there security surveillance in this area that they're trying to break into well going back to the attributes and I'm gonna say with the wisdom eh, both of these guys are not the sharpest tools in the shed they're thieves but they're not very smart thieves so when I look at my intelligence uh, well their intelligence falls below average at this point the difficulty rank is average, but the chaos factor, because these two are arguing amongst themselves, has taken it above average now to a four. And let's see if there's a security system there leading to a new thread. I'm going to roll the percentile dice again. And I have a 54%. So, at that point, above average column in the difficulty rank chaos bracket compared to below average 54, I'm going to round that up to 55, and the odds are likely. Okay, likely tells me, yeah, there's a security system. This is the new thread. This is what, at this point, things are going to get a little hairy here. Now, let's get back to those random tables and let's see what kind of, um, we'll say trouble is heading towards my unsuccessful thief and his NPC helper here way, shall we? Now, Rolling my percentile dice again on page 60 to the event focus table. So, there's a security system in place. And what is going to happen at this point? 
I rolled a 94%. NPC positive. So at this point, there's a security system. Somebody knows that they're there. They're having an argument. And at this point, the NPC decides that, hmm, maybe what we need to do is stop arguing and figuring out how to get past this. So, at this point, let's see what the meaning subject of this would be. What, what is driving him for the change of heart here? And I roll a 34%. And with the 34%, expectations. He has expectations behind this job. He's expecting to get something out of this. And snaps to his wits and says, we need to get the job done, man. We need to, you know, just leave the past into the past. The lock is being a bear. We need to get past it. We need to figure out another way to get in. Now, what is his action? What does he do to try to get past this lock again? Rolling a 31% at that point. Heal. So heal. Well, he can't really heal a lock, but maybe at this point he finds a way to mend the tools that they're using to be able to try to pick that lock again. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to the fate chart. So the difficulty rank is four. It's above average. Um, using his skill with dexterity again, he's got above average. And at this point, a 50-50 chance he may get past it. But let's see where we come in. Rolling my percentile dice again. Well, one, I got a hundred percent there. And looking in that column with his, at this point, ability and crossing that down to a hundred, he has succeeded. At this point, he was able to get past the lock. And this is where the scene's going to end right here. They got into the building. Now the thread with the security system goes to scene two. So scene two. Now they got a, at this point a chaos factor of four above average. Now what because there's a security system they have been observed breaking into the building at this point I'm going to drop that chaos factor to a three it's now high so what I want to know is has somebody been dispatched to apprehend these two so looking at my chaos factor I got a three it's high I'm going to use the average column at this point which is going to be a 25 a 50 50 so I'm gonna say Anything at a 25 or below, more than likely, no. They're not going to send somebody out, but they have their descriptions. They have a pretty good idea of who they are. Anything above a 25 at that point, well, yeah, they're going to send somebody out to apprehend them. So let's roll the percentile dice and see what happens. And I rolled an 80%. Hmm. Welp. The odds are, looking at that, going crossing over to the odds, a sure thing. So the new thread's going to be a sure thing. Now, this is where I have always suggested creating your own random tables and detailing them to your games and finding other random tables to be able to, at that point, drop them in and make your games flow smoother. They give you some random tables here, but you're mm, kind of limited. But anyways, we're going to use these tables. So now, at this point, at this point, 
there has been people, I'm going to say people, dispatched to this location to apprehend these two. Now, I'm going to go to my random tables on page 64. I'm going to roll these. And I'm going to roll on the action because I know there's people dispatched, but what type of action are they going to use to try to apprehend them? And I've rolled a 35. A 35 will come up, return. Well, return. How could I use that logically for return? Well, at that point, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, I'm going to re-roll again. I want something that's going to make sense for this storyline. Return doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I roll a 49. Let's see what a 49 will get us. Harm. Harm. Okay. So these guys are coming not to apprehend. They're coming to harm them. They're coming to... Oh, man. And... I'm going to roll on the bottom table the event meeting, meaning as to why do they want to harm them? Why? You know, these are a couple of um, unwitty thieves breaking into what they perceive to be this abandoned building that has something in there of uh, great worth to them. And I roll a 90, I'm sorry, a 54. So let's see what a 54 is investment they're coming to harm them because they have something worth a large investment to them and they're willing to kill for it so at this point I'm gonna say what if this abandoned building which is supposedly supposed to be an abandoned building really is a warehouse housing weapons of a lot of money fully automatic weapons that they can make a lot of money out in the black market but these guys are coming to kill them to prevent them from that happening. Now, at this point, the chaos factor has gone up. Now, the chaos factor is at a two. It's exceptional. Poo poo is getting ready to hit the fan here, people. So now, that leads into that thread for that scene. I'm going to end that scene right there. We know people have been dispatched to their location. They know they're there, and they plan on going in there to kill them to protect their investment. I'm going to go into scene three now. And scene three is they're inside the building. What do they find? And let's see. So ex they have an exceptional, exceptionally high chaos factor. At this point, they are, I'm going to say, they are informed of what they're going there for. So they have an above average idea as to what they're looking for. The chaos factor is exceptional, it's extremely high. Do they find what they were looking for? I'm gonna roll on my percentile to see. I get a 60. At this point, it goes from 55 to 60. So we're gonna hang on 55, a sure thing. They find it, they find crates. As they open up these crates, they find high-powered automatic weapons and at this point they're collecting them now going by back to the thread verse of the bad guys coming I'm gonna say the bad guys have now at that point reached the destination and we're gonna say no I think we should leave it up to chance. Let's see if our two idiot thieves realize that there are headlights outside. Okay, so the chaos factor is exceptional. Um, but they're not that smart. Actually, they're below average intelligence. So, using my 
attribute modifier, I'm going to go to below average, and I'm going to go over to exceptional. And let's see what the odds are of them actually realizing that they're no longer alone. I rolled a 64. And comes up likely. So, at that point, they realize they're not alone. And they have to, at this point, make their escape plan. So the next question I'm going to ask myself, is there ammunition with this weaponry? Well, let's go back to the fate chart and see what the fate chart has to, at that point, say about it. Chaos factor is exceptionally high. And at this point, they're looking for ammunition. Now, they're searching for ammunition, and I'm going to say their wisdom is below average. They're not that smart, right? So below average, exceptionally high. I'm going to use that same column. Do they find ammunition for these weapons? They roll an 82. Now, a sure thing. Because it jumps from, on this column, I rolled an 82 from an 80 to a 90. So I'm going to round it down to 80. I go across and my odds are a sure thing. They do find ammunition and they begin to load these automatic weapons. It's at that point, well let's see, yeah, it's at this point the bad guys are now kicking in the door and combat is going to happen. Now at that point, depending on your RPG system, you'd use your combat system. If you're using Mythic, Mythic will outline how combat works and how they recommend you use combat, but I'm not going to get in depth about the Mythic system, particularly because I've never used the Mythic system. Um, I've read through it, but I've never been interested in it. I, there's other RPG systems that I have used the Fate Chart for, and that's about it, folks. So, I don't want to leave you on a cliffhanger. Let's see at this point, real quick, the two morons that have broken into this place, they have, I'm going to say at this point, these mafia guys getting ready to slaughter them. Do they know how to use the weapon? Well, we know they're not that smart, below average. Chaos factor is exceptionally high. As a matter of fact, the chaos factor is going to raise one. It is now incredible. They have impending doom. They're getting ready to go into combat. Let's see if they actually know how to use these weapons. And they come up with a two. A zero, two. Well, <clears throat> very unlikely. So, as they're sitting there fumbling, trying to figure out how to load the weapons, heck, they probably don't even know where the safety is. At that point, the bad guys come in. And I just have to ask myself this. Incredibly high chaos factor. At this point, these guys coming in here, they're trained professionals. They are trained killers. So, I'm going to say... They have a very high ability at this point. And at that point, do they kill these two idiots? Let's see. A 31. High. Incredible. Goes to a 25. The odds are likely. And that's where the story ends. They were at that point killed in the warehouse trying to steal the weapons. And that's how Mythic works. That's, to put it in a nutshell, to be able to show you, that is Mythic. Now, if you plan on using the role-playing game of Mythic, you have to actually read through the book, create the character, and use their combat system the way that they explain it to you. But if you're just going to use Mythic for a Game Master Emulator to answer questions, 
that's how you would use it. So let's go through a real quick recap at this point, how to reuse the fate chart, what the brackets mean, and go from there. Okay, first thing, whatever RPG system you are using, if you are using a D20 system on page 99, you're going to want to use the box on the left hand side, it says 3D6 attributes. Looking at your attribute, so if you're using a D20 system, attribute modifier from 12 to 13 will give you a plus one. And if you look down at that point at your bracket, it's going to tell you if you have an attribute modifier of a 12, you're going to be average. If you have a 13 to 14, you're going to be above average. Now, if you're using um, Worlds of Darkness, um, or any of the White Wolf Studio games that will use the dots for your attributes. At that point, you're going to use the box in the upper right hand corner and using those dots, you're going to cross reference and look at your ability modifier. So if you have two dots, you're gonna be average. If you have three, you're gonna be high. If you have four, you're gonna be incredible. And if you have six, you're gonna be awesome. So if you have six in your strength, you're gonna have awesome strength. Now, if you play a percentile game such as Ruin Quest or Rollmaster or Harp, at that point, you're going to use the percentile skills box in the lower right hand corner. And at that point, cross reference your attribute and go from there. Now, one thing about that, if you're using a percentile system, this only goes up to 100. So in a percentile game, sometimes your, at that point, abilities can go above 100, particularly in Rollmaster. So this system at that point is going to max out at awesome. So you have to keep that in your mind when you use the system for those type of games. So quick recap. Page 99, find the system you're using, figure out where your attribute modifiers fall in with the acting rank on the fate chart. At that point, the difficulty rank, difficulty rank being the best way I can explain this, what is the objective the characters are trying to achieve? Is this something average? Is this something that they do every day? If it is, well, at that point, it would be below average, right? I mean, if your characters are going to the well to get some water, this is an everyday thing that they do. And I would think on the difficulty rank, it would be minuscule. It's a, a, an average thing. But if your characters at that point are trying to break into, let's say, a wizard's tower, and it's their first time, well, the difficulty rank, I would say, is going to be exceptional. And they're going to fall into the two. So that's how that works out. Now, and that's a, the very quick way you can use that. If you want to use it exactly to the way it was written in the book, everything starts out on five at average with your first scene. And then at that point, as you progress through the story, as the chaos factor goes up, you start to either move up or you start to move down on the difficulty rank. So now what brings me to the next part of this is asking your yes no question in rolling your percentile. If you roll doubles, meaning 11, 22, 33, 44, so on and so forth, at that point something has happened. A random event has happened. You will then turn to page 60 you will roll your percentile dice again and looking at your final number 
on the upper right hand corner, you're going to at that point use the event focus table to give you the focus of the event that happened. Being, let's roll and see a random event, 51. 51 comes in as move away from a thread, which means something has moved you away from that thread leading to that next scene. It is something has come up impeding it. Now, the event focus tables, they give you a couple of them here. They're kind of vague, and that's where Mythic gets into. You kind of have to use logic and reasoning when using the random tables to be able to, at that point, make them work for your tabletop game. And like I said, if it doesn't work, it's not making sense, roll again. Pick a new one. Now, after you have gotten the event focus table, you're going to turn to page 64. And you're going to have the event meaning, or the action, and the event meaning subject. So, let's see the thread. What is impeding? What has caused, at this point, we to halt progress in this scene and create a new thread. Rolling on a 48, success. So what they were doing, they have achieved success at something. They better than what they hoped for. And what is the meaning of that success? Harm. So they thought they were going to be successful. They thought whatever they were doing, they finally reached it. They finally came to do what they were going to do, it blew up in their face. Now they're injured. Now, hypothetically speaking, these characters aren't going to make the rendezvous point because they're injured, they're hurt. Now they got to figure out how to, at this point, gather their wounded and be able to get out of the area. That is mythic in a nutshell. That is how Mythic is used. Um, it's a very simple system. You know, I know Mythic, uh, like I said, it's a book. I had to read it a couple of times when I first got it to be able to understand it. It's, as I said in the beginning of the video, is like when you ask somebody what time is it and they tell you how to build a clock. And that's exactly what the game system is. Now, the good thing is, if you get stuck and you want to, at that point, um, want a cheat sheet to go off, they actually put one in the book, and it is towards the end of the book, and that would be page... 122 even though they don't even have it marked in here it would be page 122 right here it shows you the fate chart just as i explained to you it's going to give you a quick description on how to use it so let's read that real quick state a question from a yes no determine rank determine the rank acting rank and the difficulty rank for res the resisted question the acting rank is the rank used by the initiator of the action. The difficulty rank is determined by the players. If this is an odds question, then determine the odds rank. The resisting rank in this case is set by the chaos factor, which gets into, as I was explaining to you, as the events unfold and happen, where you use your logic at that point, your chaos factor is either going to increase or decrease, depending. Modifier ranks. Apply any modifier ranks, which you know what your modifier ranks are. Determine the probability. Cross-reference the ranks on the fate chart for the probability of a yes answer to the question. So they're, what they're explaining to you is a, another way that you can use the fate chart is this. So your characters at that point have entered this dungeon and the uh, 
they do not anticipate that there's a large pit trap in front of them. As a matter of fact, the informant that gave them the map never even wrote it down on the map. So at this point, their difficulty rank went from average to high. So now, as I'm going to say, because I don't have a rogue in this party, they are relying on their fighter to lead the way. Now the fighter, he's not really a rogue. He, so as he's moving through, he's going to have a below average skill at this. Actually, we're going to say a low skill at this point of detecting the trap. So using the column for my acting rank is low and using the difficulty rank, I can cross-reference those two columns and go across to the odds, which are very unlikely asking myself the question does he see the pit trap very unlikely well he just fell in it's another way you can use the fate chart me personally I like to leave it up to the die rather than crossing just the columns now it gets down to roll the 1d hundred if you roll within the percentage range the answer is yes if you roll above, the answer is no. So that gets back to if you've ever used percentile, same thing, right? If you if the percentage is 50-50, a 50% or lower is success, a 51% and higher is a failure. So very simple. Interpret the answer. Draw the most logical conclusion from the results which is why they put the random tables in there to help you with those logic decisions as they put it to be able to at that point move the story forward add some twist into it and keep it interesting that my friends is mythic in a nutshell and that's what we have i hope this video helps um Mythic is a great system. It really is. And once you really get comfortable using this, I highly, highly urge you to don't use this as a crutch. As a matter of fact, create your own random tables. Create your own fate chart. Make a system detailed for you to the way you like to play your RPG games and just use this as a template to do it. And you're gonna find over time, once you come up with your own system, you're not gonna be relying on this chart anymore. And at that point, your games are gonna run more fluid. They're going to run quicker. And everything's gonna start coming together for you, my friends. Hope this video helped. If you liked it, please click the like button. And if you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button, click the little bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I upload a no a new video. All right, my friends, it's getting very late and uh, I've had a very long day. So I think I'm going to end it here. And at this time, I think I'm going to uh, turn in for the night. So game on, my friends.